everyone. Thanks for joining us. This is Sipping Tea with Nat and Z. I'm Nat. And I'm Z. Hello, hello. Hola, como estas? All that good stuff. <laughs> yes, Welcome. Yes. You know. Yes. Welcome to, yes. Welcome to our second episode of the year. <laughs> um, yes. If you didn't listen to the first episode that we had, we talked about the fact that we we're changing our format up a little bit and we're only going to do about one episode a month. Um, you know, if that changes, of course, you all would be the first to know, but we figured that we'll be able to provide better content um, with the change in the uh, the schedule. Um, and it also gives us a lot more flexibility. Both of us have a lot going on personally right now. Um, and so it just affords us more time to prep, to be better prepared, to be able to have guests, um, to be more thoughtful and mindful of the topics that we are discussing. So yeah, if you missed the first episode, that's just a recap of <laughs> where we're going this, yes, where we're going this season. Um, and we're also, um, providing you with a different way to look at the hot tea this time mm -hmm. around um instead of just it being more gossipy and you know us just talking about the uh shenanigans of the <laughs> that are going on Ooh, currently in pop culture though. yeah mm -hmm. very entertaining we're gonna try to uh drive it back to um some of the topics that we talk about you know setting boundaries and um you know uh, which you will put up with, which, which you won't yes, put up with, which is yes, a lead in your triggers, our, right? Yes, your triggers, yes, which is a lead yes. in what our episode is about today. Talk about what you ain't putting up with. So, you know, kind of giving you some idea and trying to, to tie it to what's going on with hot tea and some of the foolishness that we may be seeing on our Instagrams and on the TikToks, if you will, because. Um, of late, uh, as I'm sure Zarifa can attest to, there's quite a bit of hot tea going on and we just want to figure out a best, another or unique way to kind of convey that to y'all going forward. Absolutely. Um, yeah. and we're not, and we're not having our typical hot tea, like the tea that we're drinking or, or, you know, we've gotten a lot of feedback about that. And, you know, while some people like it, a lot of people don't, um, and, you know, I think it initially was a very good way to kind of introduce us mm -hmm. and lead us in in a very unique way but i feel like now we've kind of uh solidified who we are and what we're trying to convey so that isn't really as necessary to kind of stand out like we used to yeah and you evolve and you change and you kind of embrace what's coming next which is also things we talk about throughout yes. the show. so yeah we're kind of just manifesting and living what it is that we talk about so Absolutely. So with that being said, we can get into some hot tea. <laughs> yes. And um, yes. Yeah, so if you have been living under a rock, this is the only way you would not have been privy to all of that is under a rock though. <laughs> yes, going on um in the uh social media realm, in the entertainment realm. So recently, there has been a lot of back and forth with the rap girlies, <laughs> more specifically between Nicki Minaj and Megan Thee Stallion. Mm -hmm. So to give you a little bit of background, I did some research on this, and I'm going to uh, preface this all by saying I'm, I like uh, Megan Thee Stallion. I am not somebody that I think would buy her albums or anything. I listen to a song here or there. I definitely wouldn't pay money to go see her in a concert. Um, but I, but I, but I think my, um, it, like my empathy for her or my care for her or my like towards her is just about what has happened to her over the last past couple of years. Right. Um, been a bit tumultuous I, for her. Yes. Um, and I, and there's some way that I, you know, see what she's going through, you know, having lost her grandmother, her mother, her father, um, you know, my father's still living, but I've, you know, lost my grandfather at a very young age, my, my, my mother at a very long, young age. Um, I lost my grandma a couple of years ago. So I understand how that can have a, an effect on you, especially as a young woman. Yeah. So there is some sympathy and some empathy there. So I'm prefacing that. 
I'm also prefacing it that I've never really been a huge Nicki Minaj fan. Um, I've probably in her the beginning of her career listened to a few her there. Um, but again, she's not somebody I would pay to go see you in a concert. She's not, not a, somebody you're that not I would a pay barb. To. Is what I of what I'm getting. definitely what we'll talk about. I'm definitely not a barb. Um, and so um so some context and some history. Uh depending on you know where you're at, the they were Nikki and Megan, they were cool in the beginning. Um, they did a song together called Hot Girl Summer. Right. Um, and somewhere after that, their relationship fell apart. It seems like it started to fall apart when Megan did a song with Cardi. And Ooh. I think the issue is more so if my enemy, if if my oh, enemy yeah. should be your enemy. Right. Right. I feel like that contact that that is definitely something if we're good friends, if we're my if you're my best friend. Um, yes, then my enemy should be your enemy. I mean, maybe at that age, as I'm getting right. older, I don't really care. You know what I'm saying? As long as you're not like, if you, if that's your friend, then that's your friend. I just know I'm just not going to have certain conversations with you for the fear that you may go back and right. talk to that person about some of the stuff I said. Um, so, and then their relationship just fell apart. And over the years, Nikki has been throwing, you know, some shade towards Megan taking some shots at Megan. Megan probably has done some, um, you know, shots, subliminal, you know, shots. Their relationship definitely wasn't as contentious as her, Nikki and Cardi B. Yeah, so she wasn't trying to hit up um, her in a, in a lobby of, of a hotel. No, Car like, yeah, no. Like Megan Cardi never went to go try to bop her upside her head with a shoot, no. <laughs> so, um, and 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 during this time, also Nikki has taken shots at some of the other girlies, um, and you know whatever the case may be. So, you know, Megan got shot in the foot by Tory Lanez, and she was vilified for that for years. Um, How did she, you get vilified and you got shot? Hmm. Well, let's look at the time where we're looking. I know, I know. Um, so. And, I, and 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 it's crazy because, well, I'll get into that as well. So we we see her fall back and then she reemerges, right? I'm looking good. Like she's been working out. She has mm -hmm. been really, it appears to be focused on her health, her health, her mental health. She comes out with a song called Cobra and she, on Cobra, she basically tells it all. Like, yeah, I, be, I drink a lot because I'm depressed because right. I've lost my mother and my father and my grandmother. Like my support system is gone. I'm a young woman in my twenties who wouldn't be trying to numb the pain in some way. Not saying that it's right, but again, people it's deal with their trauma. Yes. It's understandable. Yes. I'm out here and I have, uh, I have sex with a bunch of different dudes. I've had sex with a bunch of different men. Why, why are you shut slamming me? Right. Like y'all got I'm mad trying. at them. Right. So, you know, it was well received. And then her ex came out with the song <laughs> because in the song she said, never said his name. She just said, caught him cheating, getting his blank, blank in the same bed that I sleep in. He uh. comes out with the whole, that's all she said. That's all she said. That's all she said. Mm -hmm. He came out with the whole song about her called Megan the person. <laughs> okay. Wow. And I'm giving you this context to see where we are now. So then she says, she, she gives a snippet. Y'all keep talking about me. Y'all, I've been hearing y'all. I hear y'all coming for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say what I need to say. And then I'm not addressing it anymore. A lot of people had stuff to say about her. Drake, um, a rapper by the name of Little Yachty, mm -hmm. Baby, um, and then Nicki Minaj. They've all had some things to say. DJ Academics, who's like, I don't even know why he's even in existence. But... <laughs> so he so she comes out with the song the only song the only thing she said that i could point you now there could be other people who dissect the song a lot more whatever mm -hmm. the point exactly to Nicki minaj was a line that said um uh these hoes don't be mad at megan these hoes be mad at megan's law now if you grew up at the time that we grew up, Megan's mm -hmm. Law is something that you would know off the top of your head. You know right. why that's in existence. You know what that's about. The young kids didn't know. So then they Googled it. 
And then they were like, oh my God, blah, blah, blah. Like, okay, it's not that serious. It's a clever line. That's all she said. She right. actually went after Drake a lot harder than she went after Nikki, in my opinion, saying that how he talks about he don't like BBLs, but he got one. Oh, um, oh, 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 <laughs> oh, shots fired. Oh my goodness. It's just a lot. Like, then called to him. He said that he posts up in other people's hoods looking like a bad bitch. Oh. Um, what's that your, he, what's you know, that was Drake. Why, why she got beef with Drake? Because he's been coming for her like that, oh. calling like he's been doing a lot of like. And Drake is just a shady person. I don't like Drake. He even came for Rihanna recently. Like what? he was at a concert. Yeah, his concert. It was like two nights ago. He played "Work" the song that him and Rihanna did together, and he was like, "Yeah, I don't sing this song anymore, so y'all can sing it." Like Rihanna got two kids. What? She ain't thinking about you. He's still upset that she don't want him. And that woman don't give a damn about you, clearly. And she has made that very clear for years. <laughs> um, oh, so, so then Nicki Minaj went on a, a rant for 92 hours. It was just, that long? Yes. The first few things she said on Twitter about Megan, they were funny. I even found them funny, right? And it was just like, okay, that was a good line. That was a good line. That was a good line. And right. then she just started to spiral. And then she's talking about this girl's dead mama. And then saying things like, oh, you know, you... And this is all based on something that is a fact. Your husband... <laughs> was, Her trauma. Sir, was uh, charged and had served time for a sexual assault that is true your husband has to register as a sexual offender that is true these are not things that i'm making up right um and then it just at first like i said it was funny and then i'm like wow she's really spiraling where are her people right and so <laughs> yeah where are her people you're and then she brings uh, her ex-boyfriend back into this the mix with his party and then talks about how he like yeah he called you lying lipo because you got liposuction but this is a woman who's literally butt was leaking for months because yeah. she had bad ass shots um Everybody and don't even move. party it doesn't and party is cardi b's ghostwriter so all of this the the crazy stuff that cardi has said about you has been as a direct result of party so the fact that you're not on his side when he is literally on the side of your ops as the kids say because right. he's her ghostwriter. It just makes no sense. So that led me to think, and this is how I'm going to bring it back into the things that we talk about. Our trauma shows up in different ways. Mm -hmm. We get triggered by things. And sometimes the things that we get triggered by can really show us where we are and what we're dealing with mentally, right? right. And not even be aware of what it is that you're being triggered by. Because it can still take right. a while to be to figure out what triggered you that that whole right. the straw that broke the camel's back it may not be the big thing that's causing you to spiral but it was that just that one last thing that one little thing on that day that you may have that kind of just sends you yes and it seems yes. like that this was one of those situations because for you to go on a 90 plus hour rant over somebody who literally just stated a fact about your situation you right. know and, and it's just and didn't say anything like the thing is people have said way worse and have called you out specifically this girl said one thing in one line in one song and then you went and made a rap a, a song based off of the tweets that you basically did if she had did the song if she had just taken those tweets never released them and then put them in a song i think that her comeback to Meg would have been much better and it, and and people would have respected it and appreciated it more um, because right. people feel like she's such a great lyricist. The fact that you put it in the song and then, I mean, you put it on Twitter and then you bring it to um, a song. It's just like, okay, we already heard this. Like, you're not doing anything that's different. And I started to think like, um, you know, we, we look at situations Right. We look at the situation. We look at situations and we see people and we're like, Jesus, what's happening? Where are their friends? Where is right. this? Or what's their situation and, that they're living in at the time this is happening? Exactly. You know? So initially I was like, and, 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 and I'll say this. I still think that she just was doing too much. 
But I did start to think, well, what is going on with her right now? And then I started to do a little bit of digging and I started to look into her, like finding information about her um, family situation. I didn't even know she has a sister. Her sister don't really deal with her. Um, then her brother's in jail for uh, sexually assaulting a 14 year old. Um, mm -hmm. Then your husband is a, a sexual uh, predator on paper. Um, then your and she father was finding that out in the in the conviction based on what he told her, because right. he may have told her something else, and then when it came out, that's right. traumatizing for her to be like, "What do you? Well, what do you mean? That's not what you told right. me." Right. You know, and that, that absolutely is traumatizing in and of itself to deal with the fact that now that you've been lied to, now you find out what he's been convicted of, it makes you sit back and think all these other things. Well, how do I, you know, because they just had a kid now, mm -hmm. you know, and all the things that come with that, you mm -hmm. know, so like it can definitely, that is, that is like a whole bonfire about to kick off because you don't, you might've been blindsided. She might've been blindsided. She's still mm -hmm. dealing with it. She has a child with him and she's getting it from the familial side as as well as from her partner and how into yeah. understanding how to process that. And then now you've been feeling like you're being outed that much more and you're still trying to deal with it. Right. And then I'll say this, right? Because I'm not to let her fully off the hook, right? Right. And she knew that there was, he was convicted. Like she knew he was in jail for sexual assault. Right. She knew that when she married him. So she doesn't get a pass with that because, and I feel like if you knew this man was a sexual, not, not a sexual part, like was convicted of sexual assault, you decided to marry that man. And then the consequences of marrying that man, you have to right. take, you know, business brands, people aren't going to want to associate with you because they don't want to be associated with someone who right. like that. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, and you can't blame people for that. You just right. can't blame people for that. Like that would be like me knowingly, um, I know that a family member of yours is a child molester mm -hmm. and you have them at all your functions. And I'm like, I'll just show up with my child. And then if something happens to my child, who's to blame? Yes. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Like you can't take, I can't be let off the hook for that. Right. right. Um, we create but, situations that are challenging either way. Obviously. Right. It's just like with the R. Kelly situation, right? People blame the parents because they're like, yeah, you knew he was this way and you bought your children to him knowing that he had these allegations against them and things that you actually knew were true and you mm -hmm. still bought your child with them. Right. So you do, you have to absolutely take the... Um, you Some absolutely onus. have to take the response of it and onus. But again... There could have been, the situation could have been very serious, more serious than what she knew she was getting into. Right. Okay. True. But this is, this leads us all back to accountability. At what point are you accountable for what happens after that? Right. Like you have a child by this man and now you can't move the way you want to move. You can't like, this is more than just us, right? You have businesses and money and things associated and people don't want to deal with you now because of this person That's you've aligned yourself with. So mm -hmm. how long, and this absolutely leads into our topic, like the 10 things you won't settle for in a relationship. How long do you stay with a person, stay mm -hmm. in a situation knowing that they are causing you damage? And that damage isn't always physical or emotional. That damage is financial. That damage yep. is to your reputation. You know what I mean? When do you decide, okay, this is enough. I cannot do right. this. And this What's is probably one of the more, Right, the the more severe situations, right? Like you getting married and finding out that your person that you're married to has is 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 terrible with money. Their credit score is in the four hundred. You know that's one thing. Um, you elevate it. You get married and you find out that your spouse who told you they had no kids actually has two kids. Like they're different levels, right? right? <laughs> But you can't own but that levels. in that situation. You can't own that because that can't be, no. your fault, you know, it couldn't be. Because no, because you, you didn't, didn't know, know. that because there was you... what a lack of communication. Exactly. But if you go into it knowing that there was already a situation, right, mm -hmm. 
you go into it already knowing, okay, this person is a sexual predator or this person um, is bad with money. If they continue to do things or things start to happen as a, as a result, as a repercussion, you have to take some responsibility and some accountability for that. You just have to. Because right. once you are aware of the situation, if you still go into it being fully aware that this is what it is, then whatever consequences happen after that, you have to, you have to own it. You just have to take it. That's my right. opinion. Um, and I will say, because you know, when when you're getting into the the lot, if you're there's a situation where there are lies and you don't know the full situation, and you're still you're only operating on the information that has been communicated to you. Mm -hmm. So at what point it's kind of like, do you keep do you stay to find out if there's going to be more to what has been not told mm -hmm. to make so that you can make a, a an effective decision on where you go. Mm -hmm. um, because it's paramount to understand how important the lack of communication comes in than when you get into the lying part of the communication. Because because if you're lying, you're not communicating effectively because you're leaving shit right. out. Right, right. Um, you're leaving shit out because you're lying. But again, because I'm playing both sides here. Right. Nicki Minaj has the means and the and the opportunity and the access to do more research. She just does. Like, you can't tell me that in the position that you're in, that you don't have people that can do background checks, get information for you to kind of figure out, okay, where and who am I getting ready to align myself with? Because I have a lot on the line here. And if this person isn't on the up and up, I'm screwed. People do that all the time. That's why there's prenups in place. That's why, you know, yeah. they're private investigators. That's why there's NDAs. There's a lot of things that are supposed to protect people from situations like this so when i look at it i'm like this is a mess that you have created for yourself and i can feel sorry for you on one side because i'm pretty sure there is some things that, I need, that you're haven't been healed with mm -hmm. healed that you haven't healed about your family structure outside of your husband but knowingly marrying somebody who is a rapist is not something that I can be like overlook. And there's nothing that you can tell me as a person that will justify you ever deciding to marry that person, unless you have proof uh, that is undeniable that this person did not commit this crime. And the reason why it's hard for me to to kind of align myself with that because you're paying trying to pay this person off to shut up to do this to do that if this person was truly innocent you wouldn't have to go through that you have the means and the money to use the legal system to get this person you know yeah to a to point to tell the tr to the point the truth but again that's just my perspective <laughs> um so that's one half of it. The other half of it is this teaches you don't show up to every party you're invited to. She went and tried to invite Meg into the party. And Meg was like, I'm not showing up. I said what I said and I'm done. Like you can have, you be over there and you can argue with yourself. You're not arguing with me. I said what I said and I'm done. And that is a definite clear way of how to set boundaries and and protect yourself, right? Because mm -hmm. if you say, I'm just going to say what I have to say and I'm not going to go back and forth with anybody about what I'm saying and you stand on that, you've just set a good boundary for yourself. And you, the opposite side of that is when you set boundaries and somebody's still trying to get you and you're not, and they're not having the effect that they want, then you start to really see, oh, okay, this person really is unhinged because I just said, I'm not talking to you anymore about it. And now you are like really like off the deep end. And we've probably had situations in our relationships that that has happened where it's like i ain't arguing with you about that no more right. um i think you could be you know, arguing you, with yourself right and then but you also need to think about how how do you define arguing with you know with with yourself at what point do you stop communicating with that person to in make sure that they're informed of what your boundaries are how have you communicated to them what you're mm -hmm. willing to put up with and what you're not willing to put up with. How have mm -hmm. you figured out for yourself? What are the boundaries of lack of communicating that can call, or let me rephrase that. How can lack of communication create um, the opportunity for boundaries to be crossed? Right. Well, I, yeah, I think that that is a good point for us 
to take a break and then lead into the full topic of the day, which is the 10 things you shouldn't settle for in a relationship. And we'll be right back. And we're back. So like we were talking about what Z was talking about in regards to how Nikki's situation and um, Megan's situation, clearly there's a lot of communication and miscommunication going on regarding their respective traumas and how they're responding to each other. But thinking about how do you communicate those situations in relationships with your family, your friends, and your work. So if you're going to look at what are some things you're not going to put up with, because clearly Nikki was feeling, I ain't going to put up with, whether it was misplaced or not, she felt I ain't going to put up with her saying what I said, what she said, regardless if it was misplaced or not. Mm-hmm. So how does that translate into what's your breaking point when you decide to pick up and stand up for yourself and talk to someone? Because you may have communicated with them effectively, but they did not communicate with you effectively. Mm-hmm. What you needed to, to assure other folks what your boundaries are. And that can be a breaking point in a work relationship, lack of communicating effectively with your boss, your coworkers to get a project done, lack of um, lack of communication with your family. Clearly, there's some some lack of communication in Nikki's family going on that has led her to maybe, I won't say to spiral, but to to react in the way and respond to ways that she did because of everything else that's maybe going on in her life that we are not privy to. And then as far as with your your romantic relationships and your friendships and your friendships, if you you have not communicated effectively with your friends, that can lead to the breakup of a friendship. It can lead to how you, I guess, engage with your other friends in regards to the friend that you're not cool with anymore because there's lack of communication. Then, of course, with relationships, we can we already know clearly from that example, lack of communicating effectively can lead to the demise of your relationship, boundaries being crossed. And then for you not understanding your own way to communicate, because if you go on a rant for 20, however long she went on a rant for, we'll say. 96 hours. Right. You feel the need to communicate for for a straight 96 hours about something that you are traumatized about that has ticked you off. Whether, Whether your communication is making sense or not, you feel that you need, that was her way of communicating in whatever way she felt she felt necessary. Absolutely. And and when we talk about that lack of communication, you have to even understand what communication is, right? Because some people could some somebody can say I am communicating with you, but right. the way you're communicating with me is not the way I need to be communicated to, right? right. Like my communication style can be very straightforward no cut cards i'm just gonna tell you what it is i'm very blunt yeah you could be someone who needs a lot more hand holding coddling Mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that it's just how you No, it's nothing but you have to figure out how to effectively communicate with your partner with Mm -hmm. the person at work with your friends i can communicate with my sister differently than i can communicate with my coworker. correct (laughs) right and you know, sometimes the lack of communication comes from you not understanding how to effectively communicate with that person. Right. Right. You you, you just don't know. Um, but sometimes that lack of communication is just can build into what the next thing is, is just disrespect. Right. Okay. Like, exactly. There are people who are just like, I'm not if they, I, like I didn't communicate to you that is clearly a sign of disrespect i didn't tell you that i had you know two i didn't tell you that i had um 12 ex-wives mm. 21 kids I didn't right? get a million dollars right like i didn't communicate any of that to you uh, yeah that's a lack of communication but that's also a form of disrespect right exactly you you aren't really respecting me enough to be open and honest with me um that is one part of it but then disrespect can also come as like constant criticism belittling Mm -hmm. disregard for my boundaries um you know uh disregard for boundaries i think is a clear one if i tell you one of the things i have like okay if your boundary is if you have a trigger and your trigger or trauma and your trauma is abandonment and you say i don't like it when people don't tell me 
where they're go- like that they're leaving the house right because my dad left one day and never came back mm-hmm. and because of that i have you know trauma so when you leave just communicate with me that you're leaving and what time you plan on being back right and as your partner, I consistently disregard that and leave the house, never tell you where I'm going, never tell you when I'm coming back. Mm. I've, communi- I've communicated effectively with you. Right. And I've told you what my boundaries are. I've provided you with something that is a non-negotiable in our relationship. And you decide, I, f-, f that, I'm just going to do what I want to do. That's right. clearly a sign of disrespect. And then when you have that sign of disrespect, it clearly can lead to lack of trust for what it is that you're saying. So let's say you are effectively communicating, but you're probably not, if you're going out after I've given you my boundaries that you now have crossed, Mm -hmm. now I can't trust what you say in some different areas. Uh, And this is for friends as well um, and work. Like your coworker said they were gonna do something for you. Mm -hmm. You communicated in an email that you needed them to do something. They said they were gonna do it. And it may not be their, you know, I'm double side, you know, playing both both sides. Maybe they didn't get to it, but they said they were going to do it. Now you can't trust that that person is really going to deliver on what mm-hmm. it is that they said. Mm-hmm. Now, and now you got, now you have to go back and double check and recheck. And now that person right. said, okay, I'll make sure that I let you know when I leave, I'll shoot you an email. I'll shoot you a text and be like, oh, by the way, I just left the house to go to X, Y, and Z. And they stopped doing that. Now you can't trust that that person is going to be a, of their word. It creates, right. uh, it creates a, a whole, you know, conundrum of stuff when in a relationship and now you're working on eggshells and you don't really right. know how to, how to, how to gauge what's going on in the relationship, no matter what kind of relationship it is. Because if you don't right. have trust in some way, shape or form, because there's definitely different levels of trust. Now you have to sit there and wonder, am I compatible with this person? Well, not even that. Before we we would go there, I, like when we talk about lack of trust, is you look at the the situation in its totality, right? Uh-huh. And I feel like trust, like a lot of these things, there's a bank. I feel like you can there's a bank in your relationship, and like yeah. you as a partner, and whether it's a friendship or a work relationship or a familiar relationship or your intimate partner, you created a bank. And the person, if 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 the relationship is healthy, then your blank your bank should always be in abundance, right? right? I should have an abundance of trust, an abundance of love, an abundance of, you know, of communication, an abundance of, you know, respect. But if you start to find yourself in an unhealthy relationship, that starts to chip away, right? right? You start, okay, this comes out and that comes out and then you'll find yourself in a deficit. You will, you can, you know, and then trust is one of those things I think that's hard to build back. Right. Because you have to as soon as you do as a person does one thing that even similar to what they've done before, then it all comes back. Yes. You I trust you to pay um, our gas bill every month. And I go get the mail one day and it says that we are six months behind in the gas. What? I trusted you to pay this. So now we're digging ourselves out of that. We're clean. You've been paying the bill again consistently for nine months straight. There have been no issues. And the 10th month, you forgot. And so we get a late notice. And then what happens? Oh, my God. You said you were going to do this and you right. didn't. Well, that's because there's there's a deficit of trust. Right. That you yeah, you did it for nine off. months. Right. You did it for nine months straight. But because you do, you didn't do it for an extended period of time or whatever, for some people, like there's a deficit there. And so it's hard for me to now trust you because you said you would never do this again. And yep. now we're late. And the lateness could have been for any reason. You just forgot. And it wasn't intentional. You had right. the money. You just forgot. But you said, like a you said it's a lack of. Tr- it's a yes. You you let your family member borrow money, mm-hmm. and they say they're going to pay you back, and they don't pay you back. And then they they don't pay you back when they said, and then they pay you back like two years later. And you're like, okay. Right. And then they ask you, can they borrow some more money? You're like, no. Nope. Oh, last time I let you borrow money, <laughs> <laughs> it took two years. Without communication, due to lack of communication, you could have let me know what was going on, but you didn't. Exactly. So, you know, that's just a lack of trust. And like you were saying, sometimes when there is a lack of trust, there's a a part that comes out. It's like, am I even compatible with this person? 
Right. You know, one of the things we shouldn't settle for in a relationship is incompatibility. Um, you should have shared values, shared interests, shared life goals. If I, if if we're both saying we want to buy a house, that's something that we're compat. We want to buy this. We want to buy a house, and we want to buy a house in this neighborhood. But but one of the the individuals in the relationship isn't doing what they need to do to get to that point. And then there's a lack of trust. Mm-hmm. I thought we were compatible in this area. I thought our values were shared. I thought we had a goal set. I thought we were both on the same page. I thought we were in this together. But then how do you rebuild that, do you think? Because it's now hard. that's been that's been expressed that now you have a lack of trust because that person not, has not delivered on something that they had promised. And now, like you said, they were building that, that up for 10 months. And now... Mm-hmm. They were short. So, of course, now you're like, okay, this person is doing what they're doing. And then the other person is like, okay, I've done what I've done. And I'm and I'm rebuilding that. I'm doing my best. And then, boom, we, there's a snafu. Mm-hmm. Does it take longer I mean, to rebuild? I think it does. I think it takes, it de- I think it depends on the person. But then I also think, that, think it depends on what your compatibil- compatibility level is. I'm not saying that you have to be the same on everything, right? I think there is a healthy there that there's um it's healthy to have things that you're not compatible with, right? If I because it allows you to still remain some of yourself in the relationship. If you're compatible on every aspect in every arena, I feel like sometimes you can get lost in that, right? Because yeah. instead of you being an individual, now you've become this this one thing right Right. so i feel like there is some there's some some ways that you both should be different but when it comes to the foundational things i feel like if you're incompatible Mm -hmm. and it's it's going to your detriment too you got to think about that it's going to lead to a lot of dissatisfaction in your relationship and it's going to lead to some resentment Mm -hmm. it just will it just will yeah and then you may not be willing to, you know, because even being compatible, like you said, it's not like being the same because you don't want to, you know, just have every where you're absorbed into that person and you mm-hmm. can't see where that person ends and you begin. That's a perfect you, way of describing it. Yep. Yeah. You still got to be able to, you know, compromise and negotiate. Now, if that person refuses to do that, then that's where you got to think. Now, they just want me to align with them and they can't figure out where I start or where, the, where I end and they begin. That's mm-hmm. an area that, you know, you might be like, you know, this may not be for me, mm-hmm. you know, and that's okay. You know, and there's, there's a point where you, you compromise and negotiate, but you don't, you can't do it to the point where you lose yourself in that person. Right. Because now you're not being compatible with, you're now you're incompatible with what you may want and what that person may hold. And it just doesn't right. align for you, you know? And one of the things that we probably should jump into is sometimes that stress of compromising our core values sometimes that resentment Mm -hmm. turns into bitterness turns into a lot of dissatisfaction and just um uh, uh, it just simmers to a point where it could turn into some situations abuse right and especially and that may show up with the um in the form of emotional abuse and unfortunately also in physical abuse because if that person is refusing to compromise and negotiate and it, and it comes out in such a way that they're demeaning you or how they're negotiating. And that is, that is, can be considered emotional abuse because mm-hmm. if they're belittling you and not, and disregarding you and your, your boundaries and belittling you in some of the terms that we talked about earlier, that can be seen, that is seen as a, that is a form of emotional abuse incessantly happening and and that person is not trying to hear what you're saying and unfortunately not always but physical abuse can sometimes accompany the emotional abuse um, right and those are things that you definitely should not be putting up with yeah and i think we absolutely and i i think that as a collective we all are in agreement on what physical abuse is right we can see it mm-hmm. you can see it you are you know, you may have known somebody who was in a physically abusive relationship. Physical abuse can happen in um, with your family, with your intimate partner. I would hope not with your friends, but in some situations, mm-hmm. you know, that can occur. Um, but I feel like the emotional abuse is the one that takes a, people a lot longer to come around to. Yes. Because 
you can't really see emotion if that makes sense mm-hmm. like i and and because of that it's just like oh well you know yeah he he said that but that's not a big deal it or, creeps up on you yeah he you know he he lashes out but that's not it when yeah. he gets angry we're in a car he'll drive really fast in and out of traffic that is emotional abuse like if you mm-hmm. are putting me in a state of fear if you are putting me in a state of uneasiness of anxiety of sadness of depression because of your behavior and you may never be putting your hands on me but your 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 moods and your and your character and the way you behave puts me in a situation where i don't feel comfortable that right. is emotional abuse that is is mentally you're mentally abusing me you're emotionally yes. abusing me and i think that people will be more ap- likely to leave a well more likely to be like oh my gosh that's physically he's physically abusing you leave then they would say like you know he's that's an emotional yeah you know it takes a little while to doing. have that realization yeah and some people don't see it very clearly like I'll give a good example. Um, when the Kiki Palmer situation happened, mm-hmm. prior to it it blowing up, right? Prior to people seeing the video of her child's father like flipping her over the couch and putting his hands on her, there was a a, a situation where she went to Usher's concert and she had on an outfit and she looked good. She's a mm-hmm. young woman. Is it something I would wear? No, but you wear what you want. She looked right. good. She looked good. He was yeah. like, but you're a mother though. And he had like came onto social media to express his dissatisfaction with the way that she dressed and yeah. everything else. And the girlies clocked it. The Gen Z girlies, they clocked it immediately. They was like, this man is emotionally abusive. Yep. And people were like, how do y'all get that from him saying he don't want her to be out there? She is a mother. And the girlies clocked it. They're like, no, 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 no. That man is emotionally abusive. Right. And what happened? <laughs> and what happened? Not, but, but maybe a month later. So <laughs> it is something that not everybody is willing to see or open right. their eyes to. Or, you know, I feel like sometimes the older generation is like, oh, like my parents, my grandparents, that all they did was yell, 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 yell. My grandfather yelled. You ask him a question, yell, yell, yell. Mm-hmm. I grew up like that. It doesn't bother me. The the kids nowadays, like that is emotional abuse. You mm-hmm. don't need to be yelling and hollering and screaming all the time. You can you can communicate with me effectively. That is why we have gentle parenting now, as opposed yeah. to how we were parented, right? Because right. people see things a lot differently once you get the tools and the knowledge. And I think emotional abuse is definitely one of those things. For that sure. We still have a lot of work to do as to what it looks like, what it is. And And it's hard to talk about as well, because you think Mm -hmm. about the way um, society has, because you can't see it, explaining to someone that you're in an emotionally abusive relationship because they can't see it. And I think it's challenging for your your friends and loved ones and your your Mm -hmm. family and friends, because they may just be looking at you like, well, why don't you just leave? Why, Mm -hmm. Why don't I understand? Like, what is the situation? Why is it so hard for you to leave? Not realizing you're in an emotionally abusive situation that you're trying to rationalize because you're trying to make the relationship work, but you don't Mm -hmm. see it as being emotional because hands aren't being laid on you. Mm -hmm. That doesn't take away from the, the gravity or the impact and of what is going on. And you may trying to explain that to your friends or family that you would want to leave they're like, oh, well, you know, everybody yells. Kind of like what you said, like our grandparents or whatever grew up in, in where certain things were acceptable. They didn't have a name. They weren't called out for what they actually are now. Mm-hmm. So having to, to communicate to someone, they may inadvertently dismiss you and your struggle <clears throat> and the pain that you're going through because they don't understand, well, how is that considered emotionally or mentally abusive? Yeah, and like one of the things I think that that is a part hand in hand and with emotional abuse, and it is something that a lot of people should not settle for. Well, you should never settle for in a relationship is neglect. Yeah, like it, if if I become and neglect isn't always like you just don't you're not here or like sometimes we look at neglect like oh a parent who doesn't feed their child and their child is like mm-hmm. walking around like hair not done dirty hasn't eaten in 10 days that is definitely neglect but then there's a lot of neglect that comes in the form of like emotional unavail- un- unavailability. unavailability yeah lack of effort 
Lacking, um, that is a good one. I think people don't realize that lack of effort is truly neglect. It is. <clears throat> um, truly neglect. You know, ignoring your needs. Ignoring your sexual needs, ignoring your financial needs, ignoring your emotional needs. Just being needs. ignored, yeah. period. Yes. You have now neglected the relationship. It is no longer being tended to. And sometimes it's not even as um as blatant as that or as like cruel as that or as that or as like, you know, I was watching uh Queer Eye, the new season. And the episode I watched was this couple, they were married for a very long time, I think 39 years black couple Louisiana very handsome couple when they were younger and as they got older what happens tends to happen in a lot of marriages when you start to have children everything becomes the focus just becomes on the children and you kind of mm -hmm. neglect the marriage the right the marriage um and then the, the kids are gone and so now you're looking at somebody who you become incompatible with because <clears> you have developed dangerous. different interest over and the, the guy was very much country guy and the woman was very much a city girl i mean this man was catching possum and muskrat or something i don't know what he said and he was cooking it out in the back and she was like i'm not eating that she was like more into gardening and her butterflies she had like was raising butterflies she liked her cooking shows he liked to be out in the garage tinkering with his car they definitely were living different lives and she says i feel neglected I feel yeah. like our, you don't see me anymore. And that is very real. And again, sometimes it's not very blatant. Right. Right. Um, it's not something that somebody is doing intentionally. Sometimes it's just, you know. Life. I feel like, yes, just life. Like with friends. I feel like yeah. there is also, you can neglect your friends. If, if I'm a person who is constantly constantly calling you trying to water our friendship trying to see you trying to do things and you're not making an effort at all that is a clear sign that you have neglected our friendship and you don't and you don't you don't want to to fix it but then right. there are times when life just be life in and the so neglect right. happens by as a result of, of it as a result of life so you got to kind of figure out well what type of neglect is this is this intentional neglect or is this neglect that just happens because life be life in but yeah. even if it is unintentional you still have a responsibility to your partner to your family yes. member to your friend to kind of come back and be like yo uh, you know where do we go wrong where why are we where are we missing what are we missing what what can we do to get back to center um you know it's important it is and and it can the 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 presence of neglect is definitely um can be received as lack of support mm -hmm. because you know if that person whether they realize they're neglecting you or not the perception is reality <clears throat> excuse me to that person and <clears throat> excuse me so that can be seen as lack of support or neglecting someone is the manifestation of lack of support, you know, mm -hmm. and and you want to go ahead and let's say if you're in a partner in a partnership and you explain to your partner that you have all these dreams and aspirations and you tell them and your partner is like, oh, OK, you probably don't feel supported based on that communication. Or if you've done things that you're striving for and your partner never congratulates you. Or never lifts you up and says, good job. Because everybody needs support in everything that they do, right? And how you can acknowledge what they do or what their interests are is kind of like a slap in the face. Like, you're not supporting anything that I want to do. Or they invalidate what it is that you've experienced, you know? And, and that can happen at work with the lack of support. Someone just goes off and does what they need to do and leaves you high and dry. Or... They over explain your concept in a meeting and you're like, no, I thought that we had some sort of relationship where we I could expect your support as a team member. And then it can show up in the workplace like that. And then how we talked about your friends not showing support. Now, is it intentional or is it because their life is life in as well? And that's like they don't mean not to be able to support you. Or I think there's also a point where you need to pause and figure out how do you think these people can support you? Because if you have not articulated sometimes the best way to be supported, um, it, it can cause a riff. Because I know, like, God forbid, when people lose people in their lives, you know, mm -hmm. the prayers and sympathies are great, but maybe asking, well, how can I best support you in this situation? I just, 
I just read something about that. And they were like, instead of waiting until something happens to ask somebody how to support you in situations like that, you should have that conversation prior to the situation ever happening. Mm -hmm. So if I, I should, I should, using that in real world, I should come to you and say, if you lose somebody close to you, how would you want me to show up? That way you don't even have to think about it, right? Because this is a topic that we'll, I said we were going to, I wanted to talk about um, later decision fatigue, right? Yeah. It's definitely something we're going to talk about. When you're going through something traumatic, you get decision fatigue. You can't make decisions. You're tired of making Amen. decisions. About something. So it's easier for you to be like, you know what? If somebody close to me passes away, or if I'm going through a traumatic situation, don't ask me what I need. Just do this. Like, right. if you want to know what I need, just show up with gift cards. So, like, maybe I, I you know, I get ill. And you say, just give me gift cards so I can order food. Or not even that. Your friend is pregnant. Just send gift cards so they can Uber eat their food. Right. So they don't have to think about food. Or yeah. hire a laundry service so that they can just come and take their laundry and wash it for them. A cleaning hire service. Hire somebody to come and overwhelmed. clean. Right. <laughs> right. Um, but lack of support can show up, like you said, like, if you're at work, if you have a manager that doesn't support you, how are you going to do your job effectively? Exactly. Exactly. If you have a parent that doesn't support you, how will you go out into this world and feel like you've actually are a contributing member to of society, right? Mm -hmm. You may always be second guessing everything you do because you don't have the support of the people that you feel should be there to support you. If you have a, pa a partner who belittles your career aspirations, who invalidates all your experiences, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> who tries to stifle your personal development because their personal development is stifled. That's an I issue. Do, yeah. That's a, a huge issue. And it shows up, sometimes it can be insidious in that it's it starts off small and then it kind of grows. So you kind of mistrust yourself. Like, no, it couldn't be that. Could it be that right. they don't, that, I don't think this just, maybe they were busy. It's not that they don't want to support me. And then you have to figure out sometimes is that lack of support due to jealousy or resentment yeah. or other it things. It is, a lot of times. You yeah. know? And you're not realizing that and you're asking, why can't you support me? But that person is unable to articulate to you because that they resent you. Because maybe they don't even know that it's just showing up like that. Because it can be it's very possible. convoluted. It's very, you know, yeah. and then because they're not in touch with their own situations that have put them in the, the mind frame to be resentful. Right. And you then, know? you know, with that, sometimes we find ourselves, like, again, all, everything we're listing out right now are the things you should not settle for in a relationship. Um, the control issue, right? Mm -hmm. That shows up everywhere. You can have a boss who's micromanaging you. That is control. That is a control issue. They have an issue with control. Your friends want you to only be friends with these people and only dress yeah. this way and only do that. That's a big that is one a control you, issue. That's a big one for, I think, young people without realizing it at that time oh absolutely you know absolutely. like well, you can't be friends with me if you're friends with her and so i mean it, it goes into adulthood you know mm -hmm. they, there are limits because if you know that like zurifa said earlier if that person is doing something to you and you friends with them and you like i don't care but to the point of are they just being all out detrimental to you and your person and you just uh, right you know what i'm saying if you if you i feel like once sometimes sometimes when you have controlling issues when somebody is very controlling they're pretty much just trying to isolate you yeah they're trying to make um you know they're trying to make you be dependent upon them mm -hmm. so much so that you can't even make decisions for yourself because they're right there right you see that in my like i said you see that with bosses who micromanage um you see that with partners who insist that you change or they try mm -hmm. to gaslight you or they, you know, they say, well, why are you friends with that person? Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be friends with that person. And that you start person questioning is... your own yeah, psyche like, and your own huh? decisions. Right. Like, what? Like, wait, wait a minute. What are you saying? Like, why did you, why did you write that report that way? I wouldn't have written that report that mm -hmm. way. And it undermines you, you know, right. and, and it can be the beginnings of um, red flags for an abusive relationship. Absolutely. I you feel know. like control issues are definitely the the beginning of and, and people I think always think that abusive relationships can only occur in like relationships where you're like intimately involved with somebody Not or at all. you have like a familial connection with, but you can have an abusive relationship at work. Yes. <laughs> you can definitely have an abusive relationship at work. For sure. Um, 
For sure. Uh, absolutely. And like the control issues sometimes then goes into what? Infidelity. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that control <laughs> or lack of control. Mm-hmm. Some people leverage or participate in, in, in infidelity because it's a control issue for them. They get to control mm-hmm. who they interact with. They get to control how they see themselves because or they're in a relationship with someone where they don't feel like they have any control. So they mm-hmm. step out and engage with somebody who they feel like they can control and do all those things that their partner will not let them do mm-hmm. in some instances. Other instances, they're just, you know, assholes and they just do what they want to do. But, you know, right. there may be, but that that also speaks to control, lack of control or wanting right. to impact that upon that. Um, and how important, you know, the com- importance of commitment and fidelity mm-hmm. in relationships, because that is huge. We see, we see it every day, how infidelity impacts relationships. And now there's those situations where folks say, oh, I would never... If this person did this, I would never stay. I, you don't know. You really don't know until you're in the situation. Mm-hmm. So you can exact um, all your your thoughts and, and premises of what you would or wouldn't do in those situations. It's a, I think it's a individual decision. And if you've had those conversations with your partner about where you stand on infidelity, at that point, you can make some decisions, but it will be informed by the traumatizing experience that you're going through, unfortunately, you know, and and go ahead, go ahead. No, I was going to say, you know, even with infidelity, I don't even think like how we've delved into it, into like the different topics that you have, like with, I mean, the different things not to settle for, like control issues and emotional abuse. I think infidelity is just one of those things. It's just like, we all know. Yeah. It's just not something unless you have an infidelity is, is something that, if you say, well, we made a decision in the beginning of our relationship to have an open marriage, then we're not talking about infidelity because then it's Correct. not infidelity because you've made the decision, the conscious effort, the conscious decision to say we are going to see other people in our marriage. Correct. But infidelity is definitely one of those things that is just like across the board. If that's if that is a boundary for you and that is a absolutely no, then it's something you shouldn't settle for. Now, we do know that people stay and that is your decision. But it is definitely one of the things that when we did our research, it came up time and time again that people are like, you should absolutely not settle for infidelity. And infidelity right. looks different. If somebody it does knows. it one time, then are you, you stay or, you know, somebody does it multiple times. Like, it's definitely one of those personal, Decisions. again, something you shouldn't settle for, but at Agreed. what level? <laughs> right. At There's levels level? to it. Like for some people, at what level? Right. And not passing judgment on anybody who makes the decision to stay after infidelity, but at what level? Right. Right. And I feel like if, if you if you've come to a mature decision to say, OK, I did it one time. I'm never going to do it again. Mm-hmm. And and then that's what leads into our next and final thing. Not to settle for is lack of accountability. If you've taken accountability mm-hmm. and said, you know, I hurt you. I did this. Um, I'm sorry. It'll never happen again. Mm-hmm. Then and that's exactly in actions, right? And you decide to move on with the relationship after that, then that's fine. Um, but there are people who will consistently do something over and over again, and they just refuse to take accountability for Completely. their actions. Sometimes that is rooted in narcissism because people, some people, just never think that they are ever wrong or yep. that the world centers around them. So why do I need to take accountability for how I've wronged you? Um, there's situations where people look like, well, why is this situation something that I need to take accountability for, right? Um, and I feel like accountability is one of those things that it's definitely a key mark of a healthy relationship, yes. right? I Friendship. feel like if there oh, is, okay. yes, I feel like if you have that, then it, it does set you up to have a healthy relationship because a lot of, accountability leads to apologizing, and change behavior exactly if, if if so if you know that your partner is able to take accountability then it may be easier for you to forgive you know one-offs but if right. your partner is somebody who lacks accountability then it's definitely going to be difficult for you to be like i forgive this one situation and then i'll give you another try right because you like you consistently do these things you consistently Correct. engage in bad behavior and every time you do that you look at me as if i'm like wrong right Mm-hmm. Um, 
And I say the same thing for your friends. Like, there are people that I'm no longer friends with, and they probably still to this day don't understand why we're not friends. That is a lack of accountability on your part. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> not on my part, right? We're not friends because you failed to take accountability for the things that you've done. Right. And you In don't even see how you are wrong or how you've wronged yes. or how you've, and if you can't even see it, then there's no need for me to even move forward with this friendship. There you go. The same thing at work. Like if your supervisor tells you to do something, you do it and then it backfires. And the supervisor is like, well, you did it, but you told me to. Exactly. You gave me the directive. You gave me the directive. So you want this all to fall on me? You're not going to take accountability for any of this mess that you've made? Yeah, not cool. Are we really Are we really doing this right now? Mm-hmm. And now you have lack of trust in your boss to move forward. They all they all feed off of one another. Everything that we all do. About. They all feed into one another in some way, shape, or form. And there is they're all on a spectrum. Nothing is except out short of the the physical and emotional abuse are are should be deal breakers, so to speak. Because if right. you can work through them, but they do inform each other. And if they're happening in succession or they're happening as a group, then that may be a situation you need to leave. And you need to right. leave absolutely. Away. So to not settle because some of these things in in isolation are some things that you can fix in relationships. But if right. they're all happening together to, in, in, a, in concert, it is definitely a space where you need to be like, you know what? I can't settle for this. Let me figure out what I'm, what I'm going to do. What are my next options? And so with you saying that, taking emotional and physical abuse off of the table, because that is something I think no one can say. Right. That is not something to settle for. Um, or there's leeway in that, right? I think that that's one of the things we can say that's kind of solid. Like, right, you should not be accepting that in, under any circumstances. And there's no situation I can look at that be like, it's okay for this amount of time. So right. taking that out of the equation, what three things from this list, if you could only pick three, would mm. you pick as your absolutely bottom line? Ooh, let's see. Probably lack of accountability. Mm-hmm. Disrespect. Mm-hmm. Um, control. Okay. I, and okay. I see that because if you're being disrespectful, um, that to me, that means you've communicated effectively and now you're just dismissing what it is I've asked for. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah and yeah. then <laughs> and then I feel like the lack of accountability is me holding you to that and mm-hmm. you dismissing it is further disrespectful because mm-hmm. you're not mm-hmm. owning your shit. Right. And the situation that you've put yourself in. Um, and I realize that comes back to control, that you are disregarding my wants, my needs, because you feel the need to be in control. So you decide to be disrespectful in that regard. So, those are good. Those are good. And and actually, you and I are the same on two. Uh-huh. I had uh, disrespect. I had lack of accountability. And then I had lack of trust. Because I know mm-hmm. I'm the type of person, once I stop trusting you, my attitude towards you is going to change before mm-hmm. there's like before trust is Zarifa and after trust is Zarifa before trust Zarifa is very open, very giving, very loving, very like you can have the shirt off my back. I will do anything for you. I will walk the earth 10 times around for you. I would move mountains. I would shower you with all of the golds and riches of the world. Right. And as soon as I have a lack of trust for you, it is burn the earth, scorch. You can't get uh, shit from me. <laughs> right. I I, it is hard good. pressed to find a way to get anything from me after that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like that lack of trust stems from some level of disrespect. Right. Disrespect yeah. And I was just about to say that. Some way. About to and, say that. Yes, and because you've disrespected me in some way, I've now lacked trust. And the trust is that you have my good. It's not even, and when we're talking about trust, it's not always like, oh, you out here having sex with somebody else. You out here being, no, it's you have no 
regard. No regard. For my overall well-being. Hello. Emotional wellness. You don't. So I can't trust you with Anything. my. No, I can't trust you. Um, and then the lack of accountability, we've already discussed in a right. plethora of ways. It's just lack of accountability. If you cannot, because then that means you're not apologizing for your disrespect. Exactly. You have no regard for that. And no. so then that's where we are. And I'm not saying that these, everything else, because we just picked three because, you know, everything else for us is definitely still something you shouldn't settle for. But I think that there are different levels to that, Agreed. right? Like there's different levels to what you are going to accept for infidelity. Like there are people who say, I would never, if my husband cheated on me, I divorce him tomorrow. And then the husband cheated and they're still with them. Or there are right. people that will say, you know, I would never let somebody neglect me. But they, but even in that situation, neglect is different, right? It's never, sometimes it's not an intentional neglect. It's just life be life and your parents right. and, you know, you've raised your kids and the focus has been on them. And then when they're gone, you're just like, oh shit, who is this person that I've been with for these last 20 years? <laughs> you know and what I mean? Right. And you're so, like, who the hell are you? Right. So I hope that through this, you know, you can reflect on what you truly want in a relationship, what not to compromise on, um, your essential needs and desires. We're getting close to Valentine's Day. So a lot mm -hmm. of us who are not in relationships are looking to or are in situationships that they hope to turn into relationships. But I hope <laughs> that if you are in a situationship that you hope to turn into a relationship, that you're looking at these things and saying, OK, what are my boundaries? What is my yeah. bottom line? What are the things that I'm willing to accept and not? What are the things that I'm willing to compromise and I'm not? What are the things that when I look at myself in 20 years and I'm still with this person, what are the things that I know will be absolutes for me? And what are the things that I know will have some gray areas? And right. I think once you figure that out, you'll be in a better position if and when those situations arise. Right. Um, and that basically is the last sip of tea for me. <laughs> <laughs> And there you have it, folks. So there you have it. Thank you for joining us this week on Sipping Tea with Nat and Z. As you know, you can follow us on Instagram at Sipping Tea underscore Nat and Z underscore pod. And on Facebook, Sipping Tea Nat and Z to get info on upcoming podcast topics, guests, and news. Thanks for listening. And uh, we'll see you next month. Enjoy. Bye.